So the main thing is, um, again, education is everywhere in all cities. So the main thing is we never charge, we don't, all our technology, we give it out for free to schools, to students, and to government as well too. Whoever is interested to help improve the tech education quality, we're happy to work these guys for and for free, so we don't charge anything. And then to your point, uh, LGUs, I think for us, if they want to use the technology, yes, please, right? Again, uh, if that means they can uplift their their IT workforce, that then would uplift whatever system they want to put in place for their particular um, area, perfect, right? Again, that, that goes with our grand vision of really improving tech as a self so that the com country itself uses it to actually better itself, right? So, so the last thing is like the reason why we're happy to work with any local government is part of vision. It's always about equality. So not just about uh, individual level, but also uh, at a city level as well too. I want to make sure all cities have an equal chance to attract the best tech employers to the city. So we work with Iloilo, the government, and they were able to attract some of the biggest tech companies to Iloilo. And we plan to do the same thing across the entire Philippines as well too. We want to make sure that uh, we want to stop the so-called the local brain drain. Like all these guys from the province, once they graduated, they all came to Manila. So, and again, if programming jobs are the middle class jobs, and if they all concentrate wait, wait, here, the income gap will continue widening. And it's, and, and it's contributing to a lot of infrastructure problems in, the, in Manila itself as well too. So hopefully we give um, an equal chance to all cities as well too, and that's what we're doing right now. And, um, giving, again, Iloilo is just our first seat that we dropped, right? That's where the first spark comes and then replicate across the country. What does it mean, like, uplifting their lives? Uh, most of our employees have cars, right? They're fresh grits and they have a car, right? So they can afford a car, and that means we're already providing them a tool to actually spend money that drives economic value and so on. The money cycles within the economy and they're participating in it. And they're also showing other people, you know, there is a career in tech in Iloilo or in whatever future uh, part we will put another seat down, right? So that's really what I was saying, right? It, it works, it's happening, right? And uh, that's the good thing we can show, we can show that it's really working. This is the way forward, it's not just an idea. Uh, I have two more questions. Um, the, we, we, we really appreciate your agenda or your ambition of um, reforming like, education uh, yeah. here in the Philippines. Uh, do you have, or what, what is your ideal, um, the ideal education level that you are targeting? Is it um, high school or college? Then second, my second question is, who are your um, technology partners? The, the, the companies, the, the big companies that you are, that you've been mentioning that you are planning to um, introduce your, the, the students. Okay, so the first question is, uh, yeah, so we, we, our technology can calibrate to different level of schools. So uh, we, we do plan to give our technology to high schools and university, colleges and universities so to for free. The second question is uh, some of the biggest company we work with, for example, and chain, and chain, I'm not sure, do you, do, do you know the blockchain? Okay, so, um, and chain is the world's largest blockchain R&D company. And with our data, so what we did is I shared the data with the founder of that company. And he, he liked what he see, so he put, now he's putting up, not back offices, but R&D training center in Iloilo, doing blockchain R&D work. Uh, our East West Bank is our client, but they're not, but they're not hiring in Manila right now. They're hiring in Iloilo, because initially they want me to help them build the team here. I showed them data, I'm like, why don't you give a chance to those guys? Like, they, they're really good as well too. So they're moving their development offices to Iloilo as well too. Um, 
there is some Moby Gator. Moby Gator is the Eastern Hemisphere largest medical technology companies. So they are supplying their medical technology to over 1,200 hospitals around the world. These technologies save lives. And right now they're building a 100 people team in Illegal as well too. I just add to the first part. Um, it's a global uh, question, actually. Should the high school should be involved in tech education? And the consensus is yes, it needs to be. Uh, how many of our jobs in the future will need to have software development basic skills? Majority. Even in, in, in journalism, right? Eventually, there will be something coming up that if you know a little bit of programming, it will help you be better at your job, right? Uh, Retail, data management, right? Anything. Technology is coming up. If you're if you're a business person, you should know R and Python to do data analysis, data representation. It's it's the path forward, um, and we need to start doing this. Germany is struggling. I'm from Germany, right? Germany is struggling in, in figuring out how to put tech education in on high school level. And again, it's easy with a tool that is agnostic to what level you're in, right? So. High school must be the path to go. People need to learn tech skills in high school. So, sir, suppose the main thing is uh, universal career, universal, universal university ready and career ready. So, most of us are familiar with Netflix, right? So, Netflix is actually studying your watching patterns to determine what types of movies and content they'll make. So, in terms of business and um, programming, right? So that's one way of what, so entertainment and content. So I um, any other questions, guys? Okay. Uh, my question is, how are you directly benefiting from this? Um, if, uh, you're offering your platform for free, then the, the competition also for free. So how are you earning from this? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, actually, that's a very important question. So, like, um, first of all, again, we are not a nonprofit, but we are we are a project with a revenue model. So, the project is the the goal is to bring equality to tech education and tech employment. And uh, I, and I, as I mentioned, I don't profit from students and, and schools. So, we what we did we charge employers. That's where the revenue comes in. So yes, so we charge the people that have money and use that money to finance the learning of people that don't have money. So every employer that you attract, you get something like a commission? Yeah, yeah, so we have like like a fee to help them set up an office, putting up operations and hire local programmers. So in a sense, we are attracting foreign invest, investment into the country and then we just charge employers. So we only charge uh, international tech employers. Sir, you have a question? Yeah, no, one, just more, one small question about the, more the league. So you're both focusing on coders based on desktop and on the app, right? Based on? Uh, both on the desktop and on the apps. Yeah. So um, we, we focus on testing their fundamental capability as a programmer. So. From our perspective, uh, if you're good in programming, you can learn anything in in, in, in months. Yeah. Because the, the thing is, um, and actually that's a problem with hiring right now as well too, like I think companies focus too much on what type of technology you know how to build right now. But there's a new framework, new libraries coming out every six months. So in tech, it's all about how fast can you learn the new technologies. So that's where we focus on. So again, if you're good at math, you're good at math, then you can learn all these data analytics technologies. And just to add to that, because like through our tools and through testing, through staff lead, um, we actually ask them, it's like, okay, this is the way for you to submit your um, program programming um, solution to a certain problem. So if you're comfortable in solving it in Java and Python or whatnot, we're gonna test you that way, because that is, how comfortable you are there. And like what Bill was saying, if you are adept at a certain language, it doesn't always mean that 
um, you're great at that. We need to be able to test the fundamentals to see how great you are to be able to be flexible and adaptable to different um, things in technology. Because I mean, that's also the thing about technology, that technology changes every two to three years. So if you're stuck on one language, it will be very difficult for a certain person to be able to adapt through the times. So so much better for us that we look at their foundations, their fundamentals, to see how great they could be, they are, and how um, potentially they could become. Um, if you look at schools nowadays, what you have to be careful is that I think this um, resonates with all these problems. When they just teach you a language, they don't teach you computer development, basic fundamental skills. So there's, this is what you do in Java, this is what you do in Java, this is what, and you come out and you know only Java, but you've never learned how to take that knowledge and learn PHP, learn Python, or whatever. Um, this is careful, and there's a lot of schools like that popping up. Um, if you're I used to be on the side of hiring tech talent, it's very, very, very hard and difficult, right? Um, that's why when Phil was making adamantly sure that you understand, we're not testing a language. We're testing the foundation to, uh, to take any language and make sense out of it, right? And create anything from that. That's where it goes, the fundamental, and that also goes back to high school. Because if we teach them just the fundamental level of how any coding or development is done, doesn't matter when they get to college what language is hot and, and, and in, in, you know, involved. Yes. Because they just got the, the foundation ready. Thanks. Sir, the winners in the uh, stock uh, league, are they assured of uh, jobs in these global tech companies that you're promising? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like what tech companies are this? Um, it really depends. Uh, a lot of times it really depends on the high bidder because I want to make sure uh, the, they get paid well. So uh, based on the score, based on the score, we're going to determine the salary and then we're going to see which which companies that can pay that amount. Yeah. That's a very good point. So when we hire, we don't hire based on experience. You get your worth based on your non-biased assessment of your skill, right? So you can be 15 years in the industry, but if you come just at the barely hireable, you're not going to get the equivalent. Right? So even on a balanced view of how we hire or how an employer in the future should hire you is how good you are, not on how long you've been in the industry. Right? And that's I think that's a fair model. That's really fair. You know, you get paid on your skills, right? Stephen Curry, he doesn't get paid based on experience, but on his skills. Do you have particular developers you're looking at, like are these full stack developers, any. front end, any? Any type. Uh, again, it's really about how good you are as a programmer, your, your, your foundation as a programmer. As, as long as you're good, like from, from our experience, the best developer that came up from the tournament, uh, they can pick up blockchain from scratch in four, four weeks, uh, within a month. And they're launching cryptocurrency already. Anything else, sir? OK, uh, if you guys have no more questions, or at least any follow up, you can always reach out to Marcy, myself, and uh, anybody on the device here, so I'll give it to Marcy.